Good morning. Uh, in this video, I'd like to discuss a work uh, called Truth Speak. And this is work put out by uh, Dr. Michael D. Hastley. And uh, the uh, book is dealing with five Christian words that have been distorted uh, by uh, religion. And uh, uh, he uses the words concept, the, the word uh, new speak, which is uh, from uh, Orwell's uh, classic novel, 1984, where uh, uh, the uh, political uh, words are changed. Uh, words change to, for political reasons. Uh, truth means the lie, lie means the truth. War means peace, peace means war. And we've seen the same thing happen, uh, happen in uh, Christianity, uh, where clear words are distorted to mean something else. And that's why the uh, defenders of the King James Bible are so adamant by keeping the King James Bible, because there you have the words in the correct context, the right word in the right context. And once you start messing around with that, then the words can be easily changed to mean something else and distorted. And that's the crucial issue. You've got to have a uh, the correct Bible, the right Bible, King James Bible, and look at you know what the words exactly mean in English. But uh, he points out here is that uh, uh, what religion does is uh, uh, change the words and uh, say they actually mean something else. And for instance, he's got uh, 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 new speak. Uh, uh, graces works. So uh, even though uh, it's very clear that uh, in, in Romans 11, that uh, 11, uh, 6, Paul makes very clear that grace and works are antithetical, uh, and therefore uh, uh, if it's of grace, it can't be of works. If it's of works, it can't be of grace. Religion tells us, and the fact, that um, grace and works go together. And so uh, grace is, to is totally a free gift and no works can be added to it. And uh, we have Christmas coming up and uh, people exchange gifts and no one would ever say that um, uh, when they receive a gift, they say that they earned that gift or did something to work for that gift. But religion will tell you that, 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 that uh, grace can't be truly grace. It must be a uh, uh, work mixed into it. And so they're always trying to, but once you mix works into it, it is no longer grace, it's no longer a gift. And another word he comes in here uh, is uh, uh, let me see here. is uh, finished is incomplete. Now, of course, we said the Lord on the cross said it is finished. That meant that all the sins are paid for. And of course, uh, man wants to keep constantly. Religion wants to come back and say, no, it's incomplete. And deal with sin as if somehow sin is an issue. When it's no longer an issue, uh, one of the things he talks about here is suicide. You see many people here saying that, oh, you're a Christian, you're secure, uh, except if you commit suicide, that's the one sin that uh, he can go to hell for. Uh, the reality is no one's going to hell for any sins. All sins have been paid for. Uh, you go to hell for one reason, rejecting Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. And um, uh, and that's the man who's going to accept that, that when Christ said it is finished and all sins have been paid for, that's exactly what it meant. All the sins have been paid for past, present, and future. And uh, so uh, sin is never an issue uh, uh, as per se. If sin were an issue, we'd all die immediately. No one uh, could deal with sin. Sin was being held uh, held up. The payment was held up in the Old Testament uh, and uh, then was paid, paid, off, paid for on the cross uh, because uh, you die as soon as you, you, you commit your first sin. Another one is repentance. Here's a golden word. Repentance is penance. Remember, this is new speak. This is, what, this is how they change the words. Uh, of course, repentance is a change of mind. What they want to do, they want to change it to say repentance has some form of sorrow in it uh, and some form of feeling in it that has to do with repentance. And of course, this is totally false. They go to 2 Corinthians 7 uh, 10 and they use that word, they use that uh, uh, verse in there when in fact what it's saying is that uh, uh, sorrow leadeth. To repentance, which is a change of mind. It didn't say Saul and repentance mix. It didn't say Saul and repentance are the same. It says Saul leads to repentance. But of course, what they want to do is change repentance to penance. And uh, repentance now becomes an issue of beating yourself up and, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, making yourself uh, suffer uh, for uh, something when in fact the suffering is supposed to lead you to change your mind. Initially, is they, they get saved, of course. Uh, and uh, the uh, understanding of the gospel means just changing your mind, recognizing you see yourself as you are, getting your sins, 
uh, dead in the old, na old, old man, uh, Adam, dead in Adam. And you recognize that and you have to change your mind about who you are, a lost sinner, and then change your mind about Christ, that he's your savior. And that's what repentance means. It has no, it has no emotional connotation. Uh, then he goes on here to say here, um, uh, new speak uh, about, about believing. And here's another one. Um, believing is simply confidence, uh, trust. That's what it means. And um, new speak uh, makes it commit, submit, obey, or yield. So he had all these things added to believe that we believe, we believe me, let's get the Lordship of Salvation guys would be on this. So when you can't say it just means to trust, uh, trust the Lord Jesus Christ and what he did for you on the cross and that he rose again on the third day. Oh, no, you have to uh, commit, you have to submit, you have to obey, you have to yield. And many of the Gospels, many of the uh, evangelical movements of evangelicals, evangelical uh, uh, pamphlets are, that are put out uh, by various organizations add these things on there. They cannot believe that salvation is that simple. They leave the simplicity of, of the gospel and add things on to it where they've got to, you've got to not only believe the Lord Jesus Christ died for your sins on the cross and rose again on the third day, but you have to now commit to him, you got to submit to him, you got to yield, you got to obey. And so they've added uh, faith, they've added to faith and belief uh, concepts that are not part of that. Um, then he goes on to number five um, about justification, and he says here, news, news speak, justified means guilty unto proven righteous. And so um, this goes against, of course, the issue of when you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ uh, as your personal Savior, you're immediately justified before God. Uh, he, you're in Christ, and therefore you are, you're instantly saved at that moment and permanently saved. What they want you to do is now justification now becomes a process. And you'll see all the modern versions have changed, 1 Corinthians 1.18, uh, to where you're being saved as opposed to uh, you are saved. In fact, the, uh, even the Dewey Reams uh, in the uh, 17th century had uh, saved uh, as, an, as a, a singular, uh, in a single act, as opposed to being saved. So you know all the, all the modern versions are adding on a justification as a process. When you see 1 Corinthians 1.18, the King James Bible has uh, as it being saved. Uh, you either saved or lost. It's not a process of being uh, of being uh, justified. And of course, when James, and of course, they always went to James and being justified, there's two different types of justification. Justification before men, uh, which is what James is talking about. And that's when they, when they see God working through you. And therefore, God is glorified. That's the issue of Abraham. That, that was a secondary justification before men. And, uh, but immediately when he was saved, he was justified before God by believing what God uh, told him and, and righteousness was imputed to him. Uh, so uh, this is the battle words. And this is why this is such an important issue. Uh, uh, one uh, YouTube channel does a very, very good job on this is uh, Mr. Ahid, E-H-I-D. Uh, e uh, he does an excellent job. Uh, when you read and see his videos, he'll take a word and then show um, what the word means, of course, biblically, and then show the absurdity of uh, how the world treats it, religion treats it. So I recommend if you want to see someone who's very good at uh, uh, poking holes in false, uh, the false ideas, go to Mr. Ahid's channel. And But again, the issue is over words. That's why uh, the King James Bible is, is a crucial issue. You think in words, you think in words in English, you don't think in Greek and Hebrew. And uh, what religion does is constantly change these words to mean something else. When you're reading something, it says it's finished, it's finished. When it says it's grace, it's grace. When it says repent, it means change your mind. That's exactly what it means. Uh, when it says uh, believe, it means to simply trust. It doesn't add anything onto it. And justified means exactly that. You're justified before God because of what Christ did for, did for you. And you believed and you received it as a free gift. Nothing more, nothing less. And it's not a process. Justification is not a process in terms of salvation. It is not an ongoing uh, process of, uh, for salvation. Paul is a one issue, one time issue. And uh, 1 Corinthians 1.18 makes it very clear you either save or you're lost. It's not a process. So again, it's a good, a good work. Uh, gets, uh, truth to speak. Uh, and uh, again, the issue comes back to what the words really mean and uh, dealing with these words in their true biblical context. Amen. Thank you.